Let's try some more complex relative velocity problems. The other videos are very simple problems, and we used a very simple way of writing down what was happening. But when the problems get more complex, you've got to use some kind of convention like this. A lot of things are still the same. What happens, the end result, when a plane is flying through air, is that the plane is flying in the air, and the air is moving, so we get some kind of wind, and this is the result. And the result is always relative to the ground. So we say whatever the plane is doing relative to the ground is the actual result. So when you use this kind of notation, this means the velocity of the plane relative to the ground, which I'm always going to refer to as the, what happens with the result. This is the velocity of the plane relative to the air. Because the plane is flying in the air, that's the medium it's moving in, and then the air is moving, and so the plane ends up do doing something else. This is the velocity of the wind, which is the air relative to the ground. That's how we measure that velocity. And you'll notice in this sign convention, this and this match. So if you add up the plane relative to the air and the air relative to the ground, you end up with the plane relative to the ground. I find this a bit notation a bit confusing. I rather think of it as whatever happens to the plane is a result of the plane flying and the air moving. Some of the words that might come up, the plane relative to the ground, the result, is often called the ground speed. And that includes uh, direction for it. Um, we call this the uh, plane, the speed that the plane is flying, uh, the air speed. And the direction it's flying is referred to as the heading. As far as the wind, we call this the wind speed. And the words to notice are from and to. If I say the wind is from the west, then it's traveling east. So you should say the wind is east. If I say the wind is to the west, then the wind is west. So make sure you look at how that is explained in the question. So the question I have is, pilot wants to fly at 120 kilometers per hour. Uh, with the wind from the west 30 degrees south at 60 kilometers per hour, find the resulting velocity. So this is what the pilot is doing, but the wind is pushing the pilot off course, and we want to find out which way um, the pilot goes. Now I'm going to do three problems. This is the simplest. The next one will be more complex, and the third one will be the most complex because it will involve adding and subtracting vectors in a different way. So we're starting off with something simple. Uh, let's put down what we have here. The plane relative to the ground, that's what we're looking for. The plane relative to the air, uh, well the plane is traveling at 120 kilometers per hour east and the wind is blowing it off course. Uh, the air relative to the ground, what is the wind doing? It is from west 30 south. So it's 60 kilometers per hour from west 30 south. So the opposite of west 30 south is east 30 north. At this point, you're actually pretty much done because it's a vector equation. Here are two vectors. Can you add them up? The fact that it's the velocity of something is irrelevant. I know how to add up two vectors. So let me do that. Plane relative to the ground is the plane relative to the air plus the air relative to the ground. So I plug in my numbers. 120 east plus 60 east 30 north. And of course, there's a couple of ways of adding this up. I think you can draw a triangle and figure that out. I think the simplest is just to break it into components, add up the components in the x, add up the components in the y, and find a solution. So I've got 120 east and 60 east 30 north. I need to break that up <clears throat> into x and y components. Here's my 60, there's my angle, so this is 60 sine 30, which is 30. This is 60 cosine 30, which is 52. So let's add up all the x's. Resultant in the x, we've got 120 to the right, which is positive, and 52. So my x is 172. In the y direction, there's no y component. I have 30 up. So my resultant velocity has an x component of 172 and a y component of 30. Let's add those up. So I'm going to draw x and y. 
x is 172, y is 30. So there's my result. And in this case, the result of this plus this is actually equal to the velocity. So I have to find that resultant. To find that resultant, you take 172 squared plus 30 squared, take the square root, and I'm just going to give that to you. The resultant is uh, 175, and the direction, the angle, the angle is the inverse tan of opposite over adjacent. So I plug in the inverse tan of 30 over 172, and I get 9.9 .9 degrees. So my resultant, the velocity of the plane relative to the ground is 175 kilometers per hour, and it is east 9.9 .9 degrees north. There's the answer. Now this was very simple. I gave you these two, and you just basically add up two vectors. It's going to get more complex when I start asking for this, and we have to rearrange. And then in the third one, I'm going to give you half of something and half of the information for the other variable, and it's going to be quite a bit more difficult.